I wanted to get a couple more uh, examples of questions like 22, 23, 24 on the uh, second portion of the exam. Um, my hopes are that you guys uh, seeing the first portion of the exam uh, maybe opens your eyes to how you can prepare for the second portion um, with the resources that I've provided you. But uh, this one here is um, a geometric sequence here. It says a sub 1 is 6, r is negative 2, find a sub n, and then find a sub 5. So every geometric sequence is of the form a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. Well, that means a sub n in this case is 6 times r, which is negative 2, raised to the negative, or sorry, raised to the n minus 1. That's all you've got to do. You don't go any further than that. Um, people want to multiply these together, but you can't because of those uh, exponents. Uh, so now, when they want to find a sub 5, that means n is 5. So 6, negative 2, n is 5, okay, so we get 5 minus 1, so just kind of come over here, we get 6, negative 2 raised to the 4th, okay, uh, so negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, um, what is that, 16, okay, so we get 6 times 16, and that becomes... 96. Okay, so a sub 5 is 96. Um, you could, you could double check this if you wanted to. Say, so, okay, uh, first term is 6. This is geometric, so my ratio, my common ratio is negative 2, so the next term is negative 12. Multiply by that common ratio again, my next term would be 24 multiply by negative 2 again and I get negative 48 and then multiply by that negative 2 again and I get 96 and this is n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, fifth term same 96 um, looking down here this one says find the sum of this series uh, now I made these numbers probably a little bit larger here than what you would see on the exam. But probably on the exam, you could probably uh, kind of write this list out. You can probably, you know, 5, 8, 11, 14. Uh, the next one is 17, and then 20, and then 23, and then 26. But <coughs> with this being a large number, um, that's going to take you quite a bit of time to write out that entire list. So I wanted to show you uh, the benefit of having some formulas and recognizing what type of series this is. Um, it is arithmetic. The common difference is, is 3. So I know a sub n. Basically, we want to come up with what, uh, you know, I know this is n equals 1, this is n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, but here, I don't know what that n is for 263, so i got to figure that out, because in the end, the end result, or the end um, technique or step, um, I'm going to find the sum of the nth term, or nth terms, um, and that's found by using, remember, the formula, either n times the average of a sub 1 and a sub n over 2. Or you can use s sub n is equal to n over 2, 2a plus um, n minus 1 times d. Okay, either one of those formulas will work. Uh, but in both of them, you need to see, <coughs> you need to know n. Okay, if I'm finding the partial sum of the nth terms, I need to know how many things I'm adding together. That location. If I can find n for the location of 263, it tells me how many things I'm adding together. Um, so I find the, the way you could do this um, kind of analytically is that you find a rule for a sub n. So remember, every a sub n is a sub 1, and it's, it's, if it's arithmetic, it's a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times your common difference. Uh, so now a sub 1 here would be 5 plus then n minus 1. Well, I don't know n. Uh, times d, my common difference now in this case is 3. Uh, and that's, that's going to give me a sub n. Well, a sub n is referencing the term in the or nth location. Well, the term in the nth location that we're interested in is 263. So let's replace that with 263. 
right? Subtract 5 from both sides, and we get 2, uh, 58, okay, is equal to 10 minus 1 times 3. We should be able to take 258 and divide it by 3, and that gives us 86. So 86 is equal to n minus 1. Now I'll add 1 to both sides, and n becomes 87. So this n of 26, or this, this term of 263, is at the location in my list of being the 87th term. Well, that's nice now, because if I want to add up the first 87 terms, that's what this that's what this is saying. Find the sum of the series. Even though we only see one, two, three, four, five objects, these ellipses tell us that there's more in there, and it gives me actually a total of 87 things that we got to add together. Well, the sum of those 87 things is going to be used by finding that formula, or using that formula. So, 87 goes first. Uh, a sub 1 is 5, plus then 263, all over 2. Okay, I kind of evaluate this. 5 uh, plus 263 divided by 2 gives me 134. I'll take 134 times 87, and it gives me 11,658. Okay, uh, so. We know the first 87 terms of this sequence it goes 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, 20, 23, 26, all the way to 263. Add all those uh, objects up, and you'll get that number right there. Um, uh, these are, I think, question 24. Uh, they're going to ask you to, it just says evaluate. Okay, so what we're looking for here is in order to evaluate, we need our R value. Uh, we need its absolute value to be less than 1. And remember, R is going to be, uh, if I'm looking at just a generic format here, we'll have A sub 1, which is your first term, uh, R, and then to the N minus 1. So anything that has the N minus 1 attached to it, and usually you see it this way, uh, that is your ratio. So in this case, my ratio is one fourth, uh, and the absolute value of, or I guess it's negative one fourth. Sorry, but if the absolute value of it is um, is less than one, which is the case here, this thing will converge. Okay, uh, converges for us. If that thing was bigger than one, uh, it would diverge, and we would just say diverges cannot evaluate. Um, maybe I'll show you an example of that here in a moment. All right, so what we do here, if, if that does happen, if that thing does uh, have an absolute value of less than 1, uh, we know this thing does converge. So here's the formula for finding the sum of this infinite series. We take S sub n is equal to your first term divided by 1 minus R. That's all you got to do. Okay, so A, my first term. In this case, it's 2. And then I'll go 1 minus R. Okay, well, R is negative 1 fourth. So plus a fourth eventually. So I get 2 uh, over um, about 5 fourths here. Okay, uh, multiply uh, by the reciprocal. So I get 8 fifths. So this thing's going to sum to 8 fifths. Okay, the infinite terms are. Uh, now, I'm just going to show you what this what happens here. 8 fifths is 1.6. I kind of, I've taken some time to kind of develop a, an Excel sheet here to kind of show you what we're talking about here. Um, all right, so the way I set this Excel sheet up is this first column here on the left is just N. Okay, so these are the, uh, the locations in your list. Right here is A sub 1, so there's my 2. Now my ratio, change it, my ratio is negative 0.25, okay? Um, and now what I've done here, if you look at this, basically all it's doing is taking um, the object that's in cell uh, B4, which B4 cell is this one right here. So it's taking my A sub 1, and it's multiplying it by the object that's in uh, cell C4, which is my ratio. But it's then taking that ratio and raising it to the A4 minus 1, which is that N. So it's raising it to the N minus 1. So this equation right here 
is um, essentially this right here. It's just uh, using kind of Excel's um, cell notation um, and, and referencing so that I can create this sequence pretty easily. Uh, so what happens then is um, if, if I write that formula correctly, right now it's saying that with that n value of 1, okay, the first located, the first object in our list should be 2. With an n value of 2, our first object in our, or sorry, our second object in our list in our sequence should be negative 0.5. With 3, it should be 0.125 and so forth, okay? Um, so what I do here, and then these, so these, these here are your sequence, okay? So that's your first number in your sequence, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, fourth, or eleventh, whatever. And, and you keep going through, and you can see I extended this all the way down. Uh, so right here, when I put my stop right there, okay, that number right there is the 233rd object in my list, okay? Um, so it allows us to create that sequence um, out to a, a very, very um, large n value, okay? Um, which we really wouldn't want to do by hand. Now over here, what I've done is I've I'm just highlighting, as you've given some names here, so this is the, the partial sum of the first five terms, partial sum of the first 10, partial sum of the first 15, 20, 25, 30, so forth. And right here, all I've done is say, okay, I'm going to sum the first five. So, where are they at? Okay. There's the first five. Okay. So, this equation that is in here is just adding those five numbers together. Okay. Then the equation that's in there is adding my first 10 numbers together. And then the equation that's in that box right there is adding the first 15 together and so forth, okay? Um, what you start to see, you know, the first 5 is 1.6, first uh, 10 is 1.599, uh, and then 1.6000, and then 1.59999. And you see we're kind of bouncing back and forth between something a little bit bigger than 1.6 and something a little bit less than 1.6. Bounce back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. What you start to see then eventually the more and more objects that we create. And now I'm only adding up, you know, 50 and 150 and 200 and 300 terms. The idea is add up an infinite number of terms. But we see with just a, a finite number, a large amount, but still finite, we sum to get 1.6. So an infinite number added together is still going to sum to that 1.6. Okay. Uh, now, Excel is taking some liberties here, and they're doing a little bit of uh, rounding because of how small these values are. Um, you know, this should be like 1.59999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
uh, these things that converge. Now let's talk, let's do an example where um, they diverge. For instance, let's say I have something written this way, n equals 1 to infinity of, let's just say, 2 again. But now let's use my r to be 3, and I go n minus 1. Well, now absolute value of r is greater than 1, right? And that means it diverges. Okay, and what I mean by diverges, well, let's, let's take a look at it in, in Excel. If, if, um, if my ratio here, or not my ratio, my, my first term is 2, but my ratio is 3, okay, now I'm not sure, there we go. That might be a problem, but okay, there should be. You see here that uh, it provides these objects in our sequence, and you start to see that those individual numbers keep getting larger and larger and larger and larger. Okay, and you know we get to scientific notation here, and we're getting you know twenty right here, we're getting twenty-one uh, place values after that decimal. Okay, so it's a very very large number. Um, but still going back to the sums, the first five sums are just two forty-two. The first ten are 59,048, okay, first 15, first 20, uh, but you're starting to see that those numbers are getting larger and larger and larger, okay, this is a very large number right there, but when I add the first uh, 400 numbers, the first 400 numbers added together are going to be even bigger than that, okay, so the more and more things we total together, the larger and larger that sum gets. So it's not coming down to or meeting one particular value. So this thing is diverging. Okay. So that's kind of the logic behind that. Um, and, and tomorrow you're not going to explain that logic. Tomorrow you're just going to have to do the work, uh, probably with one of these. Um, but I wanted you to understand the, the relationship and why we're doing what we're doing and why it works. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Um, hopefully... Uh, we're, we're preparing ourselves uh, for, for the, tomorrow's exam. Um, if you have any questions, let me know.